This is the start of a series of videos on structural analysis. This is from chapter three, section one. We're going to talk about moments, uh, excuse me, forces and moments of forces. A force is a push or a pull measured in pounds or kilopounds for which we use the shorthand terminology kips. A moment of a force is a concept that is used across several branches of engineering and in architecture. Mechanical engineers typically use the term torque, and most of us have a sense of what torque is. We understand torque from an engine, but we also understand what it means to put a wrench on a bolt head and turn the bolt. We understand that the more force we apply, the greater the torque. We also understand that the longer the wrench handle is, the better the lever arm we have and the more torque we can apply to the bolt. Structural engineers and architects use the term moment. The two concepts are mathematically and conceptually the same. If there is a difference in how we use the terms, it is that uh, mechanical engineers usually are dealing with situations where something is constrained to rotate around a certain axis, such as a bolt or uh, the drivetrain of an automobile. Uh, structural engineers and architects, on the other hand, are likely to calculate moments about any number of points, and the selection of those points is usually governed by convenience in terms of simplifying the mathematics. But there's no real significance in the two concepts, and it's not quite clear why the two words uh, were ever invented when one word would have been adequate. All right, so here we have a diagram showing a force P, which is represented by an arrow, and typically the magnitude or the length of that arrow is indicative of the magnitude of the force, and there's an arrow which tells us the sense or the direction of the force along the line. In this particular case, there's no scale, but in many instances there will be a scale to the length of that arrow. We can define a moment for that force about any point in the universe. And in this particular diagram, we've drawn point Q1 and another point Q2, and those were arbitrarily selected to illustrate the concept and also the details of the mathematics. We say that the moment of the force P about Q1, point Q1, is defined to be M sub P about Q1, which is equal to plus P R1. So in this case, P is the magnitude of the force. R1 is the distance between the point Q1 and the line of action of the force. It's the minimal distance, or we sometimes refer to it as the perpendicular distance, because the minimal distance from the point Q1 to the line of action will be measured along a line that is perpendicular to the line of action of that force. In this particular case, we have a plus sign, and that is uh, a mathematical convention that as we're staring at this diagram we're going to say any force which is tending to produce a clockwise rotation about Q1 shall be regarded as producing a positive moment. So we put a plus sign here and this is just a magnitude P times R1 where P is the magnitude of the force, R1 is the length of, of the distance R1, and the plus sign 
in this particular instance has to do with its being a clockwise influence in terms of its tendency to create a rotation about point Q1. Similarly, the moment of the force P about Q2, point Q2, is defined to be M sub P about Q2 equals minus P R2. Minus P R2, where P is the magnitude of the force. R2, again, is the perpendicular distance. So P times R2 is inherently a positive quantity uh, because both the quantities involved are magnitudes. And the minus sign means it's, it has a tendency to produce a counterclockwise rotation about point Q2. So P was tending to produce clockwise rotation about Q1, counterclockwise rotation about Q2. So we had a plus sign for the moment about P about Q1, a moment of P about Q1, and a minus sign for the moment of P about Q2. We have lots of pluses and minuses involved in structural analysis, and it's pretty important you get those straight from the very beginning. If you do, then your bookkeeping system will work fine and you won't get confused. If you don't understand the sign conventions though, you can do all the arithmetic you want to, but it won't be right. In fact, it will be wrong massively if you, for example, choose to call this plus when it's supposed to be minus. You'll be completely off the mark. So listen carefully and watch closely. It's, this is actually really simple mathematics, but you got to get the sign conventions right, otherwise you'll just be totally confused. Okay, so let's suppose we have two forces, P and P prime, and let's assume for the moment that they have the same magnitude. So we could have called this P and this P also if we were just talking about magnitude. But in truth, if we're talking about magnitudes, we're going to say P is equal to P prime, where these are the scalar quantities represented by these forces. But they have, they're parallel, but they have opposite senses. In other words, if we sum the forces, these would sum to zero. But they don't have zero effect because clearly anyone who thinks about it would realize that these two forces acting collectively have a fairly powerful tendency to make something or other that they're applied to rotate. This is the perfect force couple or torque, basically. And we call it actually a force couple, and we say a force couple is a pure moment in the sense that the two forces add to zero. So there's no tendency for the object to translate, only a tendency to rotate under the influence of this force couple. So let's take a force couple and pick an arbitrary point. So it's really important that we acknowledge this is a totally arbitrary point Q, which we're picking randomly. And now we construct a line from Q that's perpendicular to the line of action of P prime and perpendicular to the line of action of P because these two lines are parallel to each other. And we're going to designate the difference, the distance between Q and P prime is R and then the perpendicular distance between the lines of action of the two forces we're going to call L. And we're going to go through and calculate the moment of the couple, M of the couple C about Q, is going to equal the moment of P about Q plus the moment of P prime about Q. So the moment of the force P about the point Q is going to equal the magnitude of the force, which is P, times 
the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point Q, which happens to be L plus R, or R plus L. So we say it's the magnitude of the force times its lever arm for action around point Q, which is R plus L. And we put a plus sign on it because the tendency of this force is to produce a clockwise mo moment or a clockwise rotation about point Q. Then the effect of P prime is going to be minus P prime times R, P prime being the magnitude of the force, R being the perpendicular distance between the point Q and the line of action of P prime. And we put a minus sign on it because P prime is tending to produce counterclockwise rotation about point Q. Now in the previous slide we said P prime in magnitude is equal to P. So we can replace P prime by P here as scalar quantities. So we have P times R plus L minus P times R. And when we multiply P times this quantity we get PR plus PL and then this is minus PR. And the plus PR and the minus PR cancel out and we're left with plus PL. The plus sign indicates that the net effect of the force couple is to cause clockwise rotation. And that's pretty clear with a force going this way and a force up here going that way. The tendency of this is going to be to produce clockwise rotation. So all the mathematics is working out to be consistent with what we would expect based on deductive logic. Okay, so in summary, the magnitude of the force couple, which is a pure moment, is the magnitude of the one of the forces multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the lines of action of the two forces. And that's true for any and all points in the plane. So let's go back a second. This is, we calculated moments about point Q, which by the way, you'll recall, we said we picked arbitrarily. And mathematically, one of the ways we express that is this quantity R was represented symbolically. We didn't pick any particular distance. We just picked R. And when we ran the mathematics, PR and minus PR canceled each other out. In other words, R disappeared from the mathematics. Because R represented an arbitrary point, what that tells us is we get this same result regardless of where point Q is in this plane. That point was arbitrary. The location of that point is no longer a part of the mathematics. So the mathematics is telling us we would have gotten that same answer around every point in the universe. That's an incredibly powerful statement. Okay, so we say the magnitude of a force couple is the magnitude of one of the forces multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the lines of action of the two forces for any and all points in the plane. This is a very powerful concept that helps us simplify and organize our thinking and understanding of structural behavior. We look at structural systems and we try to group forces together into pure moments. And we often find actually that there's a pure moment of the vertical forces, which might be the gra gravity forces that are loading our structure. And then there's another counteracting moment of horizontal forces. And we call that the internal resisting moment. And understanding how to design for that internal resisting moment is a crucial part of understanding structural behavior and addressing it in a rational, simple way. So <clears throat> keep this whole notion of force couples in mind as a way of helping you think about the behavior of structures. That ends our first video on structural analysis, addressing forces and moments of forces.